so conservatives have become so deluded that at least one prominent conservative is now seriously recommending that the United States government impose sanctions on a new country. Which country, you ask? Canada. Now, he's not joking. He's not being facetious. He is quite literally saying we need to impose sanctions on Canada in an effort to help out the Canadian people. Take a look at why he says we should do this insane thing. The Canadians are some of the most loyal, lovely, friendly people, and they've always had America's back. And now we should have theirs. Our government should impose sanctions on the Canadian government. I'm not kidding. And say, we will not do business with Canada. We will shut down the border until you lift these vaccine mandates. You want to choke out Justin Trudeau? Tell him he can't bring his maple syrup into America. You want to choke out this entire regime? Stand by the people of Canada. We are about to go to war over a border dispute 5,000 miles away over a country no one cares about. How about we have the back of the nation that has had our back at every single one of our good wars and stupid wars the last 60 years? It's true. Whenever America wants to go invade a country, the Canadians are right there beside us. Anytime we want to go take out special forces, take out someone with special forces, the Canadians are right there beside us. I could be wrong, but I believe that the taking out of Osama bin Laden was a Canadian U.S. led force. I believe there were a couple Canadians part of that. You don't want to miss with the, You do not want to mess with the Canadian special forces. At the very least, Republican governors who do business with Canada should sanction them and say, for right now, we're not going to do business until Canada stops abusing their citizens. Now, you might say, well, Charlie, that's meddling in the affairs of another country. Oh, yeah, we did that with South Africa with apartheid. We do that all the time. Wait, are you seriously saying that the vaccine mandates in Canada is legally and politically comparable to South African apartheid? Is that honestly what you're saying, Charlie? Because if so, you need to get your head checked. I mean, the logic of conservatives is so ass backwards. And think about how dumb his argument is, even at accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. So he wants to impose sanctions on the Canadian government specifically to help the Canadian people. Except, do you know what sanctions are, Charlie? Do you know who... Uh, sanctions would disproportionately harm the Canadian people. So while I'm sure that the vocal minority in Canada who is anti-vaccine mandate would appreciate the sentiment, I don't think they'd appreciate you fucking them over. Sanctions hurt the people. So with you saying this, it shows that you don't even understand what you're saying. You're saying sanctions, but you don't even understand the weight behind that action if we were to ever take it against Canada and escalating against our neighbor north of the border is a very, very bad idea. We should be thankful that we have allies as our closest neighbors. We're not fighting with them. We're not in any disputes with them. We have peace in our region. That's a good thing. We don't want to change that unless you're a psychopath. And Charlie Kirk absolutely is a psychopath. Um, so he says, whenever America wants to go and invade a country, the Canadians are right there beside us. And I think that this is actually one of the um, bad things about the Canadian government. I don't think that they should support us on every single militaristic uh, endeavor that we pursue. I think that they should not do that. They shouldn't legitimize that. But still, even taking that into consideration, the way that we pay them back is to impose sanctions on them to thank them for their loyalty. I just feel like he, he doesn't even understand what he's saying. And even the most non-political person ever would, would acknowledge that at face value, this argument is not just unreasonable, but it's just downright fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Now, the biggest thing that he doesn't realize is that, you know, as he purports to speak for the Canadian people, they don't agree with him. So let's look at some polls here. Sarah Aziz of Global News reports, majority of Canadians support more COVID-19 restrictions for unvaccinated poll. Now, when you look at this poll, here's what the Canadian people believe. An Ipsos poll published Monday and conducted exclusively for Global News showed that 67% want the government to impose further measures on the unvaccinated population with nearly half, 49% of the respondents, blaming the unvaccinated for prolonging the pandemic now entering its third year. This comes as some provinces in the country like Ontario and British Columbia are already moving ahead with easing restrictions based on key metrics such as hospitalizations and intensive care admissions. Daryl Bricker, CEO of Ipsos, 
Ipsos Public Affairs, said Canadians have become increasingly polarized when it comes to COVID-19 vaccines, lockdowns, and the pandemic in general. What we've seen over the space of particularly Omicron is that people are becoming more divided, he told Global News. Those divisions were made further evident in this latest poll, as 52% said they were in favor of putting attacks on the unvaccinated, while 48% opposed that measure. Now, it's interesting to me that that's what's divisive in Canada. They're disagreeing about how far they should go in terms of penalizing the unvaccinated. Whereas in America, we have disagreements on the vaccines altogether. Are they poison or are they life-saving? Like that's that's the line here. And perhaps that's an oversimplification. But for the most part, what that poll indicates is that most Canadians are not in agreement with you, Charlie Kirk. But that poll might be an outlier because as Toronto City News reports, 60% of Canadians support fining the unvaccinated, a healthcare tax being one example. This is from Maru Public Opinion, and it was released on January 12th. So anywhere between 52 and 60% of Canadians they support penalizing the unvaccinated. And I don't even know that I'd go that far. I wouldn't support a tax on healthcare because I believe that healthcare is a human right, you know, irrespective of whatever bad decisions you may make as an individual. So I don't even think that I would go that far. But a majority of Canadians, they don't even agree with me on this. So they certainly don't agree with you, Charlie Kirk. Now, I tried to find a poll on mandates specifically, but I haven't seen anything recently. But uh, one thing that I think is important is a poll that was released after the mandates were introduced in Canada. And they overwhelmingly support that. A strong majority agree with the recently announced mandatory vaccination for federal public servants, 80%, and the requirement for proof of vaccination for flying on an airplane or taking train international or interprovincially, 82%. Similar proportions support mandatory vaccination for healthcare workers, 84%, for teachers, 81%, or vaccine passports to enter restaurants, gyms, or other indoor spaces, 72%. So in short, they just don't agree with you, Charlie, but yet you expect us to impose sanctions on them and for their response to be, oh, thank you so much for doing this to us. In what world does this logic make any sense whatsoever? And even if we had a good reason to impose sanctions on Canada, do you understand the implications of ramping up tensions with our neighbor with a bordering country? <laughs> This is baby brain shit. This is baby brain shit. Now, to be fair to Charlie, it is the case that there are people in Canada who are anti-vaxxers. You know, there's a lot of American dipshits that have influenced Canadian dipshits. Yes, that is true. But it is a vocal minority. It is not the majority of the country by any stretch of the imagination. But they do exist. And I want to acknowledge that because I don't want to be, you know, a, a little bit too unkind here. Yes, there are people who don't appreciate vaccine mandates in Canada. And we're going to look at that. So, Humanist Report Canadian correspondent... Lance from the Serbs actually attended one of these events over the weekend, and it's it's clear that they were influenced by people in America. We are in the middle of the Freedom Rally, uh, surrounded by fellow patriots looking to end communism in this country, stop the stranglehold of Justin Trudeau, no more communism, and uh, achieve freedom, freedom for all Canadians, every single one of them. Soon we will taste the sweet milk of freedom. Oh, nice. We got the stars. For your future, fight for your children. If not for yourself, fight for your children and your children's children. It's enough. Say no to segregation and discrimination in our country. We're here because we love you. We're here fighting for your rights and freedoms just as much as our own. No vaccine. No vaccine. No segregation. Oh yeah, send it to the commies. Hell yeah. Tell the commies. We're coming for you communists. We're coming for the communists. Hell yeah. Hell yes. What can you tell me about this beautiful piece of art? Well, we, we did it, and it's done. Oh, pure blood shirts too? Fuck yes. No Max Pass! No tell them! Let them know! <laughs> Communism! Yes! Fuck the communists! We'll get them all! Hell yeah! White, white supremacists. <laughs> oh, the black Canadian flag. And white supremacists. <laughs>
I'm sorry, but that don't tread on me flag is cultural appropriation. You can't use that. That's American. Sorry. Um, so, you know, this is interesting to see. You see the ivermectin signs. You see the comparisons to the Holocaust, which is deeply offensive. Same thing here. We talked about the anti-vax rally in D.C. over the weekend in the United States and how RFK Jr. was talking about how uh, vaccine mandates might actually be worse than uh, the way that Jewish people were treated during the Holocaust. Because at least, you know, Anne Frank was able to hide Whereas you can't hide from a vaccine mandate. I mean, this is something that they unironically were saying. So, you know, you kind of see the same thing there. It's it's evident that American hogs are influencing Canadian hogs. And I apologize to all of my Canadian friends for exporting stupidity to their country. But this is a vocal minority. It exists, yes. But it's not representative of the majority of Canadians. So for Charlie Kirk to suggest that we should impose sanctions on Canada, I just... I don't know what to say. I'd like to come up with a more sophisticated response than just calling him stupid, but this is extremely dim-witted. This is low IQ shit, and he should feel absolutely embarrassed for saying this with a straight face. What a fucking idiot. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 